This Coda system allows you to track, manage, and review all your expenses, the different categories of your expenses, your income, as well as have graphical representations of how you spend money and how you earn money over time. So it might be a good support if you already have a healthy relationship with money, so to speak. And in this Coda doc, you can see here on the left sidebar menu that there are four key pages. And then there is a fifth page that is database here. Yeah? And this page contains all the foundational tables of the system. So if you want to understand how everything works, this is where you can do that. From the database page, there is a description for each table that you can see here at the top of the page. And the four foundational tables of the system are months, categories, categories, months, and transactions. So the first table is months. And this table contains all the months of the year, one row for each month. This is useful to categorize transactions automatically based on the date that they happen. And then you can get data about all your transactions namely expenses and income at the end of the month, quarter or year. The categories table is used to categorize your expenses or income with the appropriate bucket. This as well is a table that enables you to get data at the end of the period. Categories months is a join table. So this table really only has a practical use. Essentially, this has one category taken from this table here, and it has one category per month so that you can have unique categories per month and plan accordingly fresh for every month and with your budgeting in a monthly budgeting system. And finally, the transactions table is where you store all your expenses and income over time that you can record quickly from the dashboard. So once you understand how this table relate with each other, you can understand the whole system. However, if you don't want to understand that, that is fine because the system is optimized to be used quickly and effectively whenever you like, whether on the browser or on your phone app in Coda. So the first page here is dashboard. Then you have finances breakdown where you can see charts and a recap of all the money spent and made over time. The monthly budgeting page is where you can do your review of the previous month and all the expenses and income, as well as visualize what next month looks like. And the workflows onboarding and FAQs page is where you can start your journey using the system because this enables you to set it up in a way that is effective for you and customized with your own categories, as well as it provides you with some frequently asked questions and an understanding of how the system works. So the first step in your onboarding process is to set up your own categories. So you can click on this page and in here, you will see there is already a list of categories. Each category is a row in this table and each category is categorized by type if it is expense or income. And each category is, can also have a not section where you can write down notes in here. So these are some default categories. So the first step of using this system is to come here, go through the list of categories delete the ones that you don't need by just right clicking and deleting or clicking the backspace on your keyboard or you can add new categories here or you can update categories just by changing the name for now for this example these categories work for me so i'm going to keep them and move on to the next step in the onboarding process of the skoda personal finance tracker and the next process is to create the categories for each month and this is a very smooth process that you can do just by clicking one button. So once your categories are ready, you can come here on this page and you will see that here you have a table with one row per month. And so far we already have 2023. And you can see the months are grouped by year. That you can expand and collapse like that. For example, I can see that for January, we don't have any categories now for this month yet because this button is blue. So I can click this button and now the categories for January have been created for me just by clicking this button. And you can see from this success message that that happened. I'm gonna close this. And for the other months, for now, I'm not gonna create categories, but I can do it whenever I like from this page, just by pushing this button. And what we are doing here, fundamentally, in the back end of the system is we are adding all the categories for the month in the categories months table. That is a join table that essentially links transactions and the categories. And we have unique categories in this table for each month to make sure that we can get accurate data. And you can also change, for example, categories for a specific month or in the future, if you decide to change your mind. Now let's get back here. You can see that now the button for January is grayed out and I can't click it. That's because it means that the categories for this month are already in the system. So that's the second step of the onboarding flow. Next up, you're ready essentially to start using the system. And here there is a description of what you can do and the key functions and features of the system. Whereas down here below, you can find FAQs or frequently asked questions that you might find useful, maybe not. For now, let's go through all the steps or features of the system that you can see here on the left sidebar menu, starting from dashboard. The dashboard is where you can quickly track 
transactions whenever you need to input them. And here, you have a button. And when you click this button, you can see that a model opens for you. The date is automatically given, that is today by default. But if you want to change it, because that's a transaction in the past, for example, you can just click on it and pick the date. Then you have the amount, that is the amount that you spent or that you made, and that you want to record in the system. Let's say this is 50 euros. Next up, you can pick the category. So the category, let's say this is groceries. So I'm gonna select groceries. And if you wanna add a description of what this expense was about, or this transaction was about, then you can do that here. Otherwise you can leave that, otherwise you can leave that empty. Next up, you will see there are two more fields in this entry, but these are automatic. They are lookup values. And so here we see the type of the transaction that is an expense because that is groceries. And here we see the month of the transaction that is January and it's automatically populated based on the date that you pick here. And that is the transaction added. It takes a few seconds to add a transaction through this button, whether from mobile or from the app. And here on the dashboard, you can see the transactions of the month listed here in order of date input. So date here, and that's a card view. And you can scroll through them when you have multiple items. And down here, you can see a month overview, in particular this month overview. Right now we are in January as I am recording this video. And you can see that I can see January as a card. And I can see January is 2023, quarter is Q1, and the static balance, that is something that you can add in the budgeting system that you're gonna see in a minute. And you have the end balance, you have the average daily expense saved this month, increased savings. And these data, we don't have them yet because we don't have enough data to calculate them. And we also don't have the starting balance yet, which we'll add in the budgeting process. In the finances breakdown page, you will see some data. So this is not an actionable page, rather, it's a page that acts as a review, as a dashboard, where you can see charts and review data for quarters in particular and the year overall. So at the very top of the page, you can see total income this year, total expenses this year, and total profits this year. And these are automatically calculated numbers. These are formulas that are embedded on the Coda page dynamically, taking data from this table that is the quarters recap table. So when you right click on one of these numbers, you can actually find out what the formula looks like and what it does. And in here, in the system, you will see the default currency is euros, but you can change that quite easily by ensuring that all your number fields or columns are set in dollars. And you can do that starting from transactions, for example, you can do it on the database page and you can go through each table to ensure that the amount fields are set in currency options, symbol dollars, or whatever other currency you are using. In the finances breakdown, dashboard, you can also see a recap of the quarters of this year. So you have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, the year that is automatically set. You have the income that is calculated automatically based on all the months and the transactions of those months. So these are sums values of income expenses and the difference or profit for the quarter that is income minus expenses. So you see that it becomes quite relevant here to make sure that your transactions are properly categorized and they have an accurate date if you want to get accurate data. Garbage in, garbage out, as they might say in data science. Down here, you will see some graphs and these graphs are automatic as well. Here you have a quarters overview chart where for each quarter you will have income, expenses and the profit for that quarter. So three bars in here that you're going to see later on once we insert some sample data into the system. On the profit trend line chart, you will see for each quarter the trend line of your profit, that is the difference column from the quarter table. And in here, you always have some quick filters. For example, if you want to change the year, if, you've, if it's been a few years that you've used the system and you want to go back to a different year, that is where you can filter the results. You can see income or expenses in a certain range and so on. In a monthly balance chart, you will see a month breakdown, a visual monthly breakdown of the starting balance and the end balance. So the starting balance is what you start with in your accounts at the beginning of the month and the end balance is what you have in your accounts at the end of the month. And here you would see a bar chart of this data visualized per month of this year because the filter is already applied that is 2023. And so next year you can just change the filter so that you can see only the months for next year. And you can filter also for other criteria here. When you scroll down, that's the last chart in the finance breakdown dashboard. And that is the yearly summary where you can see your entire income, expenses and difference, aka profit for the whole year. So the next tab here is monthly budgeting. And this is a page that is used at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month where you can go here and you can see first do a monthly review of the previous month. In this case, January is showing up because that's the current month. And that's because in this system, we assume that you can do your budgeting either at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month. 
and that's why we have some flexibility and that's why we show also the previous month in here so if you want to filter to be more accurate you can just use the month filter and then select the option here in this case january is the past month and that's correct so i'm going to open it in here there is the starting balance that i need to add let's say there is five thousand as a starting balance and you can see the end balance is five thousand because we don't have any planned expenses and actual expenses yet and in this section you will see the month but there is already a filter applied that is the month shown here is within this month and the next seven days and this gives that flexibility to do your budgeting and review either at the end of the month or at the beginning of the next month that's why we have this filter here so in this case if you do it at the end of the month here you would have february so right now since i'm doing this at the midpoint of january this filter is not working properly so i'm just going to go here and do next 30 days so that I can also see February in here because that's what I want to budget for. So I can come here, February, and then I can add the starting balance, let's say that is 8,000 in euros. If you want to change the currency, you can come here and then currency options and symbol, dollars, pounds, or whatever currency you use. And that is all the budgeting that you have to do for now in this page, in the month page. Then you can scroll down once that is done. And here you will see you have an overview of all the categories where you can plan the expenses and the income for that month. So that's budgeting fundamentally. And you see that for February here that we have selected, that is the next month that I want to budget for, I do not see any entries. That means we haven't created the categories for February specifically yet. So we can do it right here just by opening this toggle. And there is a button here that I explain how it works. And if I push this button, you will see the categories will get populated immediately like that. And so now we also have the categories for February and I can budget for each category. So for example, groceries, I can do 500 euros and gifts, health, medical, home, and so on. And I can also plan for the income. So if I have a specific paycheck, then I can enter it here. If I work as a freelancer or a more irregular job, I can plan my income depending on what I envision. And once you've done this process, you have now concluded the budgeting and review process. So you can now continue working on your finance system just by entering transactions and letting all the data live in your system. And then when you want to review data, you want to plan, you can come here and repeat the process and look at the data. And when you look at the data in this month's overview, you will see you have the starting balance. The profit for the month plus the starting balance is the end balance. In this case, because we just have one transaction that is 50 euros, the end balance is lower than the starting balance. And you can see the save this month is minus 50. The planned expenses are 1,100 and you can see them from here as well you can see total income planned versus actual and total expenses planned versus actual so if i were to also add an income transaction here at the very top i'm going to add a transaction for the income for this month then the category can be paycheck and i can close it and if i scroll down in general you can see the end balance is positive or it is greater than the starting balance saved this month is 2450 euros this is the increased in savings and you have all the planned versus actual expenses and income and you can also review all of that during your budgeting process that is where you can actually open the month and see all this data here on the page and you can also take notes here on this canvas section that is how you use the coda personal finance tracker this is a centralized system that allows you to plan properly for your money management life approach and then you can just forget about looking at data and just operate on a daily basis and track your transactions whether expenses or income like you would track your calories if you were trying to become aware of what you eat and how much you eat during the day and then at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter you can or at the end of the month you can review your transactions and the reality of things based on the data that you input and then make decisions based on that because eventually living a rich life also starts from being aware of what the current life is about that is what uh, Ramit Sati would say at least about money if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below in the comments thank you for watching for now and see you soon